Hi guys, this is the Saudi Football Fanatics channel. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining us again. And let me also thanks to the full team who are all here. Hi guys. Hello, hi everyone. Hi, hi. Um, a busy period, I think <laughs> we can say. Um, but the league is advancing uh, to its conclusion. And uh, and this weekend, as we as we record this, uh, uh, it's a Tuesday, and the last weekend, the 27th round of the Russian Saudi League uh, has concluded. And uh, probably it's it's for outside listeners who who are not so enthusiastic about the league as we are. It might be a little bit. Uh, boring to talk about the relegation battle from episode to episode but uh, i think we can say that it's it's getting even more interesting and exciting do you share my enthusiasm here or, or absolutely not? absolutely yeah it's it's not so boring just like in the english premier league or or now yeah. in the hungarian league for example uh, where <laughs> yeah, and, and, it's, and, and, it's almost and already decided there are no point so. deductions here so just to <laughs> yeah. clarify this yeah um russian 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 russian, russian. russian. saudi league well um let's let's talk about it Jula. let's talk about it yeah Hoffman. let's let's do it uh I think Hoffman. we should Hoffman let's time. Right, get into the mix of the things. Uh, I think we can say that we were a little bit surprised as well. As much as a big Abha fans we are, we are, we are surprised, but we can say Abha has won. Big victory. And really. escaped, escaped the relegation zone with this victory. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and that's the most important thing. There is going to be uh, a, a small break in the league. Uh, I think the teams deserve it, but some of them will not get it because the Saudi uh, Super Cup is uh, ongoing as we speak, and uh, and the Saudi champion and uh, sorry the the Asian Champions League is about to come uh, at, at uh, Al Hilal as well. Um, but uh, but uh, most of the teams will have a, a, a much deserved break, and and it it could lift spirits for Abha that they are moving into this uh, small break and in a position where they have not been for a long time, which is outside the relegation zone. Well, so Bre- Breathing some fresh air. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and um, it, 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 was, it was an unexpected. I mean, uh, I also wouldn't uh, count that um, Abha could um, could beat uh, Alpha Tech. I mean, Abha will have matches when, when Abha can um, produce nice results, but it was not one of those matches where I, 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 I honestly thought that they might grab one point here, but they scored two points. Oh, sorry, three, three points and scored two goals. <laughs> and and, and both, both of these two goals were scored by, by Krihoviak. And um, Jula I, I, and or, or Mark, I, I remember that you wanted to say something about this. Yeah, yeah, it was me because uh, in many cases you see it, I, uh, Drogba comes to my mind, uh, you know, with 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 our favorite African team, Ivory Coast, <laughs> especially <laughs> for Mark. Um, but, but but you know that uh, I remember when when I don't know which World Cup was it, but uh, but Drogba was played in the midfield because he was the best player of Ivory Coast, and they want to stabilize the midfield uh, to put him here. And and in a lot of places in in like in smaller national teams, especially, but but on. Um, um, like not so strong teams, there is a top player uh, up front and they put him a little bit backwards to have his vision, his quality, his capability in the in the midfield to 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 you know make the team look better and and to gale the movement of the team better. But but this time, like you know, Ilesh Bela in MTK, uh, just to <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. or maybe Lewandowski in the Polish national team. Uh, yeah, quite some time yeah. during the European Cup or during the World Cup. Yeah, so so, so we have expect examples, but if you check Krihoviak, it's it's quite the opposite. That the, uh, there are a lot of problems with this Alpha team. I think we can say that the defense is abysmal, which obviously was better during this match. But after they saw the uh, Ekambi goal scoring was also an issue, and and the solution was to move forward Krihoviak from the midfield to the to the attacking position and it worked wonders I think uh, we have seen him scoring goals not only during this match but most recently he has scored several goals so well done well done I think 
uh, and, and I don't know whether you recognize it, but another genius did the same thing with Manchester United. Um, if you see the matches of United, if you watch them, uh, you can see that McTominay, uh, a similar defensive midfielder, just like Krihoviak, is moved to the forward position. And I don't know whether he is now, but uh, some games ago he still was the best goal scoring machine of Eric Ten Hag or Eric Ten Hag's tactic um, during the season. And it's quite similar for me. Um, and it seems it's working. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why not? Uh, if something is working, but what I share with with Andrish here is the uh, Alpha Tech is not in a good form, but but we know that their their offensive setup is quite deadly. And uh, after the Nasser match, where poor Abha was humiliated, I I didn't really expect that we can get away with just one goal from this Fatek team. But uh, yeah, yeah, the team got itself well, really, really well together, and and uh, and it's a great victory. Could be a, a season changer for Alpha, in my opinion. Yeah, and they had the right mentality, right? Because Alpha Tech equalized by Christian Tello, Tello, and after that, Krihovia just scored again. So it's not like um, it was a lucky first goal or something, but Alpha could concentrate fully on the match and scored a very important three points um, because the the next foot matches. Um, will be challenging, will be challenging for Appa. I mean, they will play with Al Shabab. We discussed in the previous episode that Al Shabab is kind of jolly joker. Then yeah, the will, dark horse. The yes. League. Then they will play with Al Ogdud. That would be a real classic and a must win for each of these teams. And then Appa will play against Itihad, Damak, and Akli. And after those, Al Kaleh we are talking about in the last uh, one of the last episodes recent episodes right that they are in a improving form very much and and undefeated since a while and and, and the last match against al hazem but they were probably this, relegated already yes and Maybe. and this, this this shows very much how much they needed this three point and and the the, the breathing this fresh air because because now now they will have very very difficult uh, very difficult matches where they could go into a long depression and and that's why they really much needed these three points and that was it was a classic performance. Um, and if we if we talk about fresh air and and uh, teams getting out out of the relegation zone, um, what do you think about our red? Uh, can we say now that? They are escaped for the whole season because now they are five points ahead of um, Apo. Are they good safe po- now or point. or not? Good point because in in the Al Kala episode, I believe we we promised that we will speak about the Al Rayad Al Hazem yeah. match uh, and and what it would mean. And and in that episode, we said that if they beat Al Hazem, then they most probably will stay in the league. Uh, yeah, for, and for... it happens. Yeah, maybe it's too early, obviously, to say something like that. But um, taking into account, for example, up up has uh, fixtures, and and that um, Arad seems to stabilize his position. Um, I maintain this opinion that with this um, they made a significant step to staying in the league, and that will happen, um, especially with the efficient help of Julio Tavares from Cape Verde, um, who scored twice against Al Hazem and decided this 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 match. Um, yeah, and Mark, I I, I I I I just cannot challenge what we said during the last episode. Yeah, and also Rad will play against another um, relegation zone um, actor uh, in this league, Altai. Um, so I think if they won. Uh, if they will win that match, uh, so with another three point against uh, uh, another uh, relegation like team, I think then uh, we could say that they are safe from the relegation itself. Uh, but now they are a step closer and almost 100% that they are safe, but not totally safe. Yeah, and, and, and their fixtures are not so not so easy apart from all time match when uh, Al Rayad is considered uh, as having the upper hand, but they're playing with Fatek, Al Etifak, Al Shabab, Al Vekta, Al Akli, Damak. It's not so easy either. So, yeah, but this with this three point, they can go very confidently into these matches. Yeah, and if if we talk about fixtures, um, we should we should also speak about Ogdud. Um, they will still play against Abha, Hazem, and Dai. So. Yeah. 
the nearest teams on the table. I think it will be crucial for them to win at least two of these matches because now they are in a bad form. Now they are in the relegation zone behind Abha. And if they don't beat them, um, I, I cannot see uh, how they could escape the relegation zone. Yeah, yeah, good point. I uh, wanted to add to that that maybe Abha's next matches are not easy, but their fellow relegation fighters also have difficult schedules, we can say that. Yeah, yeah. So, true. and on the other hand, uh, if you see, maybe it's it's not so polite to say that, but I already did, so I think Ahazam is now not really a, a very likely team to stay in the league. No. But uh, apart from Ahazam, Abha is playing teams mostly in the upper middle table or, or so. Maybe these teams will not be so enthusiastic to win the match uh, while Abha is fighting for their life. So, but this can also be said about Ogdut. So, I still expect a few surprises in the coming uh, weeks. I think the uh, if we are talking about fixtures, I think the worst fixture or fixture or the toughest one is for Ariad because they are still not escaped. They are, uh, I think, on the same level as as Abha. Yeah. And they will stay play against Tai and Hazem, um, just like a relegation derby. But all the other teams are upper class and from the upper end of the table. Uh, but there's there's a good point what you just mentioned, that maybe they are um, not so excited to win at the late stage of the league uh, when the, most of the places will be decided anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that statement. The best, the best fixtures and schedule will be for for Ogdud, um, and then from Altai. So that was one of the reasons why, uh, yeah, why, why Abha needed this this win that much. Um, Abha has one of the worst, maybe as just as you mentioned, Ariad is the only team with uh, even a worse uh, schedule. Ariad is in the middle because they they have three matches which um, on paper. Uh, can be win by a red or, or at least it's 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 a close one yeah um, obviously we can conclude that uh, uh, there are going to be some surprises ongoing and that this relegation battle is going to be heated and yeah, the season and, and, is closed and, and, uh, sorry for the listeners but we can promise that in the next episodes we will talk about the relegation zone battle because it's it's very very interesting um, it's very very exciting honestly much more exciting than the situation at the top currently yeah. um, where maybe only the situation between Al Itihad and Al Tavun is something that can be discussed and this was two teams which played with each other in this um, round would you like to say about something <laughs> yeah let's talk about this because i fully agree with you we can conclude with the the uh, first three quite uh, let's say easily that uh, they have maintained their position and will likely maintain their position for the rest of the season. And uh, both Hilal and Nassar won their respective match and luckily, well, surprisingly, was not able to beat Alvegda, but Alvegda is a strong team. Um, but they do, but none of their positions seems to be in danger. But the most interesting match for this one is probably, and we leave the most interesting to the last, uh, is the Ali Tihad match, the battle for the fourth spot. And the two teams are level on points and played against each other. So while there were a lot of events in the relegation battle, probably this was the most anticipated match of the weekend. And uh, well, we already covered the big weakness of Ali Tihadi's penalties, and uh, this came back haunting them this time as well. <laughs> yeah, but only the only difference that it was not Benzema now who missed the penalty, but Hamdalak took this opportunity to to close the gap <laughs> between Benzema and him and, and challenged Benzema on the missed penalty table. Uh, <laughs> well, poor, poor Hamdalak. Uh, uh, well, honestly, I'm a little, little bit surprised that he missed the penalty. But... Uh, apart from even without the penalty, um, we have to say that in this match, Altavum was a bit of a lucky. Lucky team. Um, Jula, you want me to share some thoughts about the expected goal situation of this football match? No, thanks. 
<laughs> I would do it anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aliti had had all the chances, but even if you want to say they had 19 shots, producing 2.5 expected goals, via Tavuno reproducing six shots with 0 0.2 expected goals. I know it's we, we say many examples. Um, even Al Tavun could have won the match if one of their shots goes in. But uh, we have to be fair and say that um, Al Iti had dominated and maybe would have deserved um, this win. But um, or we could argue that they did not deserve it because they, they couldn't even score a penalty. Russian! 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 Saudi League. Um, I, I have two thoughts. None of them is connected to this match. So just interrupt me if you want. <laughs> the Thanks. first one is, is your sentence regarding uh, Al Vegda. You, you mentioned that Vegda is a strong team. <laughs> I totally disagree with you. Uh, they are not. Uh, that was my first thought. Uh, and the second one is uh, <laughs> regarding. What? What? Thank you very much for your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> regarding Al because against this strong. Vagda, they uh, weren't able to win. And now the difference between the fourth and the first, third uh, plays is only five points. And they had the chance to decide this uh, podium finally. But now it is only five points. And now they will play against Hilal. Uh, they certainly will lose um, because Hilal <laughs> wins all of their matches. Uh, so it could be again two points. So I think not. Um, I think the third plane is not decided as well, not just the fourth one. Mm, but that's all from my side uh, for for Alakli. Thank you. As an Alakli supporter yourself, uh, obviously <laughs> you had to you, you had to mention this. Uh, of course, <laughs> I, I, of course. I sense a bit, I sense a bit of a disappointment. Uh, but if you don't mind, maybe we can continue. Again, in the second phase, with this Aliti had Altavun football match. And <laughs> 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 the Alberta fans are grateful for your opinion, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and quite a, a, a not so friendly opinion after they made the King's Cup final last year, but uh, you have your right for your own opinion. So thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, but that was last year and that was the King's Cup. And now they are only one point ahead of Arad, who is not safe yet, just but, like we mentioned. So, um, no, they are not a great team. But, okay, we can continue. <laughs> we have, uh, but, but, but at least they, everyone's struggling against Alvegda, and they, they, they grabbed a lot of important points against much stronger teams. So it's a challenge for everybody. Okay, maybe at the end of the day they overcome uh, <laughs> Alvegda, but... Um, yeah, maybe it's a debatable, debatable statement that they are not that good. But um, yeah, obviously you have some, you have some right to say that because the numbers are are are, are supporting your statement currently. Well, but I like there was unlucky in a lot of events. But no, well, okay, let's get back to the match. Finally, <laughs> uh, we already put too much unintended pressure on poor Alvegda supporters. So I yeah. Just want <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, that's a huge blow to the city of Mecca that Mark maybe did not appreciate their work in the recent weeks. But <laughs> no, and, but, okay. and as you can see, you mentioned that only this Itihad thing was interesting on the upper table. That, but now <laughs> we found another topic: this Alvegda performance for the whole year. Maybe we can have another episode regarding just. Um, just about Al Vagda or regarding the middle table teams um, and their performance during the year or during the King's Cup uh, as well. But uh, I don't want to steal the show from uh, Itihad and Tamun, so so you can continue with that if you want. Yeah, but that's that's a correct statement from you. Uh, that maybe now we can say that Alakli's situation is not so strong as we believed previously because of this uh, unexpected loss of points. Um, now, maybe we can talk about whether they can lose the third place or not. But first, maybe we need to de decide because obviously the final result will depend on how we decide. And uh, we have to decide who has more chance now to challenge Al Akhli. Is it Al Itihad or Al Tavun? And the situation between them, let me continue with a fun fact because we love fun facts, um, is currently that they are 
even in every uh, aspect, almost every aspect. They had the same points, they had the same goal difference, and they had two draws with each other, right? a 0-0 and a 1-1. So currently, it's a, a very interesting balance between these two teams. We could say that mm, Al Itihad has more, I don't know, um, capacities in it and maybe more resources to um, to, to 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 finish at a, a stronger position than Al Tavun. But Al Tavun surprised us during this whole season so far, so it's, it will not be an easy easy match between these two. And then, as Mark mentioned, maybe who is the better from um, these two teams, or maybe both can challenge Alakli. It also depends on the fixtures. Well, to add to this um, consolation for the Alakli fans who have to face Hilal next match, uh, Al Tavun is also going to play with Hilal. So, and Ali Tihad will go play with Nasser. So, yeah, and on, yeah. on the other hand, Ali Tihad will have two more matches um, than the others, um, I think, because of the Super Cup and because of the uh, Cup as well. So, they they uh, they played the same amount of matches so far, so I don't think so. What? What, what did, what did uh, you mean? Uh, no, no, no. I just mentioning that um, now they have two matches in the Super Cup additionally, mm -hmm. so they will be more tired than Tabu, oh, yeah. oh, sorry, uh, sorry, during sorry, the, during the right. uh, last matches, and also they will have another one in the in the Kings Cup. So uh, that could be a factor as well during this race. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, maybe we can say that Etihad is having a little bit. Uh, well, it's close. Maybe they have a little bit easier matches coming up. I'm not so sure. Yeah, but now I think what we talk talked about about uh, I don't know um, three or four episodes ago that. Uh, where is the place of um, some teams on the table? I think now we can see the the two, true power ranking on the table, or at least between the first six teams, um, because yeah. we just talked about it that this could be uh, the power ranking of our experts, uh, maybe. And now we can finally see this. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. It, it looks like now it's a bit stable, crystallized how they look like. Obviously, we cannot one comment to this that we cannot compare the season's first half Aletifak to the Aletifak in the second half because of the changes made in January. And Aletifak seems now stronger than it was. So yes. maybe one can say that Aletifak could have been um, in a power ranking uh, before Al Tavun. But apart from that, um, I, I, I agree. But yeah, and it, it's it's also not a surprise that the four PIF teams are on the first four places, at least for now, because um, we we don't know what will happen between Itihad and Tavun in the next rounds. But for now, we can see that this is a this is one of the deciding factors. Yes, yes, and <laughs> at the end of the day, money is important. It seems. Yeah. But it's good to see that uh, Tavun maintained its strong position. Because we had some guesses whether they would be able to stay up there, especially after selling Madran to Antifac. But it seems that, yes, there was some deterioration in their form, but they are still there. So and they are challenging for the Champions League spot. So we will see. It um, will be at least as interesting as the relegation battle. I yeah, and, uh, and maybe one more point. Um, because we mentioned, um, we, we talked a lot about Alcalay last week, and I think we mentioned that uh, this round could be the end of their undefeated uh, row, let's say. And this was it. Um, Hilal easily beat them. Any surprise there or or nothing? And, and Alcala is still good, in good mm. form. It was just a bad match against Al Hilal. Uh, there is no bad match against, even if you are good, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. Yeah. Currently, I, I cannot say anything else. Obviously, Al Hilal wins everything. So it's not um, a measure of performance and measure of quality of Alcala to, um, to, to the match against Al Hilal. So let's see the next round. That's my opinion. Yeah, I fully agree with this, and I don't want to 
get into details because you know I can talk about Al Hilal a little bit too much. So yes, yeah. yes. So uh, I agree. Progress. on that already. We, yeah. we, we should just progress. Yes. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I checked the fixtures in the meanwhile. For me, it seems that Al Ahly has the easiest. Uh, easiest uh, fixture and schedule for the remainder of the season. So my guess is that they will kind of easily secure the third place at the end of the season. And I believe al will become fourth. Um, for me, it seems that their schedule is pretty the same or in, in, in terms of difficulty as Al-Tavun. But I, I, I have a feeling that um, al will become the fourth. But, you know, nothing happened so far that I expected. So as I expected. Yeah, but one interesting thing is, well, maybe we should not get back into it too much to be able to close this episode, but what happens if al is not going to qualify for the Asian Champions League? Then they, will not, play, then they will not play in the Asian Champions League next year. I mean, yes, that's <laughs> a correct conclusion, but will the players like Hamdalah, Benzema and the other top signings stay? Will it be attractive for... European players to come to Aliti or you know why shouldn't they join up high instead of feel like you many the same many European players are playing in other teams so uh, lots of European players playing in Tavun Etifak and we could you know continue this <laughs> this row and um I don't believe that it would have much impact. The players who maybe does not behave not sorry not be but that not feel themselves very good currently will uh, if there are any, and they, they will leave irrespective of whether they qualify for the Asian Cup, but the rest, I believe, will stay. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, maybe we can talk about this later or or don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> such an interesting topic as I thought. But it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it happened earlier and will probably happen later as well. Well, uh, I think we covered the most important events of the uh, last round and we are looking forward to the uh, rest of the season but if you don't have anything else or any other fun facts let me close this episode i don't have any more fun facts at this point so you are lucky Um, no fun facts from my side only uh only the maybe the next week's fixtures because our main topics next week won't be the relegation battle or the middle table or something like that but the uh, super cups final uh, between Ittihad and Hila will be an interesting one and certainly a great topic and the champions league will be back uh, in the coming days so that will be surely an interesting one yeah and also uh, a chance for Alakli to Still, some points against uh, Ahila, who will probably be a little bit more tired after the uh, in, uh, after the Super Cup and yeah, also yeah. after the Champions League or before the Champions League. Sorry, the heated schedule. I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for helping me out, and uh, thanks you guys for uh, joining, and uh, thanks to our listeners uh, for joining us too and hope to see you soon uh, we will have a very busy schedule uh, until the summer so we will see you soon and we hope to see you soon uh, be sure to follow us on every platforms we are available on a lot of platforms we will update our availability soon and uh, yes see you soon cheers <laughs>